In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And welcome everyone. Lovely to see you all. Actual people. It's, it's really, really, really great. And welcome to everyone on Facebook and the media. Uh, today is the seventh Sunday of Easter, and it's also the Sunday after the Ascension Day. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to, to whom, whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and, and from, from whom, whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ, Christ our, our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ died to sin once for all, and now he lives to God. Let us renew our resolve to have done with all that is evil and to confess our sins in penitence and faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk and humbly, humbly with you, our God. God. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace to his people, people on earth. earth. Lord God, God, Heavenly King, King Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is from Acts Chapter 1, verses 15 to 17 and 21 to 26. In those days, 
Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered 120 people and said, Friends, the scriptures had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who had accompanied us throughout the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out amongst us, beginning with the, from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph, Barsabbas, who was also known as Justus, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Our gospel reading, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. He has defeated the powers of death. Hallelujah. Jesus turns our sorrow into dancing. Hallelujah. He has the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. I have made your name known to those who you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me, I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world had hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world, and for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they may also be sanctified in truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Right, famous last words. I'm sure all of us could uh, quote a few. Um, Kiss me hardy. Nelson, yeah? Or was it Kismet? Anyway, King George V said something about Bogner, and Nostradamus said, tomorrow I will no longer be here. But we do take seriously, don't we, people's last words, especially if they 
contain a request for us to do something. We tend to remember them. So with that in mind, what would you say were the last words of Jesus? Um, our minds might flash back to Good Friday, as we recall him saying, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. But they weren't his last words, because we remember Ascension Day, when he was chatting to them before he ascended into heaven. Now, maybe we weren't in church this year, but we will remember what he said. His disciples asked him a question. Lord, is this the time that you will restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said, it is not for you to know times and dates. The Father has set his own authority on them. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth, which of course surely includes us. You will receive power and you will be my witnesses. So, the followers of Jesus, us, we're witnesses. But what is a witness? It's in two parts really, isn't it? Because we witness both to an event and then we bear witness when we tell someone about that event. And in the reading from Acts today, there were many witnesses in addition to the famous 12. Many witnesses who knew all the events of Jesus' life. And they realized how important it was for the apostles to choose a replacement for the one of them that they had lost, Judas. And as we heard, Matthias was the one that was chosen. And as it happens, and Obviously, to fit in with the event, his feast day was just two days ago. So, in view of all that, we might ask ourselves, what sort of witness are we for our faith? Are we good, not so good, or sort of accidental? Um, just bear in mind this story about the man who was called to witness in a local court, and the barrister questioning him, Asked him, what happened? What time was it? Who were you with? Where were you going? Questions went on and on, and finally the man was asked, did you see the accused enter the store? No. Did you see the man with the gun enter the store? No. Well, please tell us what you did see. Nothing. Nothing, shouted the barrister. No, nothing, said the man. When I saw a man with a gun, I was afraid and put my hands over my eyes. As one would, <laughs> maybe. So perhaps we are more accidental than we might think. Just change the question slightly. What sort of witnesses should we be? And I think we might accept that being a witness to faith is more to do with what we are than with what we actually see or say. And if we accept we're Christians, if we confess the faith, we're automatically witnessing to it, as we will do very shortly here. Our witness to other folk, though, is most loudly proclaimed by how we live our normal, everyday lives. It's how we are seen by others. You shall be my witnesses, said Jesus, not you may be or you might be, but you shall be. And at the Last Supper in the Gospel reading, Jesus prays for these witnesses out in the world where he knew full well they would be challenged by the powers of darkness and would need his protection. It's a prayer as we heard in the Gospel today, a prayer and a plea for unity. That there will be unity among his witnesses. And that's a prayer, perhaps, that we would be excused in thinking 
has never been fully answered. Church history, sadly, is a story of divisions, heresies, schisms, persecutions, hatred, torture, and intolerance. Not a pretty picture. The Church of Christ is divided amongst Catholics, Orthodox, Anglicans, Methodists, Reformed, many others. And lots who call themselves generally Protestants. And even within each church, things are sometimes not so very much better. The way we talk of one another or treat each other based upon differences of spirituality, structure, theology, mission, whatever it is. We may wonder sometimes if we're all in the same church. The one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. As again, we shall proclaim in the creed in a few moments. And what about within the parish or in our homes? Could we say to Jesus that our local communities or families are models of how we can come together in spite of differences to build a community that praises him and proclaims his good news? Well, the truth is, you know, we can. And we very often do. The church does help many folk encourages and brings them to Jesus. But we are only human, we all fail sometimes, and we do live in a fallen world. And what the world sees so very often is when we are not in a good light. And the trouble is we are very often very much of the world instead of the world hating us. Well, as Jesus predicted, we and the world usually get along quite well together because we, we want it that way, because we're human. And Jesus wants us to be in this world in the same way that he was in the world, as an inspiration to others. And those outside the church do not see us very often in that light. They could do, but they probably don't want to. So that prayer of Jesus certainly has not been fully answered. And today, as we approach the end of the Easter season, we are called to follow him faithfully and be the sort of people he wants us to be. And no one anywhere in the gospel or otherwise is saying that is easy. It's demanding. But we are called to build unity. And that is unity, not uniformity. It's a recognition that we do have different gifts and personalities. And in fact, we should go beyond the recognition to rejoicing, rejoicing in some of those differences, give thanks for them, and then strive to support each other's gifts in our common task of bringing the good news to the world what we might call the forgiving and unifying love of God. Perhaps a good example of this is Christian aid. The word Christian gives it a whole new meaning, really. And it goes way beyond denominations. It encourages us, all of us, to do something good for our world. Recognize different ways to worship the same Jesus. And through that, give a lead in a desire to live with joy amongst that racial and ethnic mix that makes up our world. A world of huge differences. But I thank God that we've seen an enormous amount of progress in my lifetime towards that goal. I think we've realized that if we don't get closer together, then atheism and indifference will triumph and our witness will count for less and less. So realizing that we have to continually consciously live the message we have received from God. Let the expectation of others make us act like the believers we claim to be. Those who perhaps unknowingly seek God 
help fulfill Jesus' prayer for us. And Jesus knew this to be true, surely, because his disciples changed when they realized that truth. They became dynamic, joyful, and prepared to die for the gospel. And we have to commit ourselves to be as good a witness as we can, even if we have to shut our eyes to do it. And to a large extent, we've been doing that, haven't we, for nearly 18 months now through, through the media. We've not been face-to-face -face people. We've sent the message through Wi-Fi and whatever it is, FaceTime and all that sort of thing. And now that is beginning to change, hopefully, then there's nothing to hold us back, is there? Absolutely nothing. And what's more, we do have a promise of a witness protection program as well. And that's called the Holy Spirit, which we're going to celebrate next week. Amen. So let's stand and declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe, we believe in, in one God, God the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, earth of all, all that, that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with, with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus, our exalted Lord, has been given all authority let us seek his intercession, that our prayers may be perfected by his prayer. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Our prayers this week were given to us by John Rigby. Father God, as we come to our parish church in Gedling this morning, we thank you for the past week. We look forward to be able to meet with friends and family in a more relaxed way in the near future, with thanks and a big hug. We continue to pray for all NHS workers who still continue to work hard for us and for all those in our local nursing homes, both residents and staff. Lord, in your mercy, hear our yeah. prayer. Father God, as the season of spring turns into summer, we look forward to relaxing in our gardens. We pray for all those going away for a summer break, wherever in the world, come back to us safe and well. Lord, in your mercy. We continue to pray for all those who are ill at this time. 
remembering in particular Stephen Dodds, Sue Brown, Jane Johnson, Gary Walton, Sarah Davis, Mike and Sheila Richards, Kate Sinclair, Janet Samuels, Jan Bird, Kate Lincoln, Brian Noak, Noreen Burroughs, the Reverend Jean Lamb, Diana and William, and Penny Greenwood. And those who are known only to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our hear prayer. Our We also keep in our prayers those who have recently died, thinking especially of Denise Smith, Albert Taylor, and Brian Goodliffe, and our friend Mavis Hewing. Wrap your loving arms around their family and friends and bring them comfort at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father God, we ask your blessing and wisdom for the coming weeks and months. Merciful Father, accept Except these, these prayers, prayers for the for sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And let's offer another a sign of peace. A wave to the camera. Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. Creator of all, you wash away our sins, you give us new birth by the Spirit, and redeem us in the blood of Christ. As we celebrate the resurrection, renew your gift of life within us. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm going to use prayer B, which is on page 15. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. 
Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you've created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. Your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy holy, holy Lord, Lord, God God of power power and might, Heaven and and earth earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ Christ has died. died. Christ Christ is risen. Christ Christ will will come come again. again. And so far the calling to mind his death on the cross His perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world. Rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Matthias and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So as our Saviour taught us, we pray together, Our Father Father in heaven, hallowed hallowed be your name. Your Your kingdom kingdom come, come, your your will be done, done, on on earth earth as in heaven. Give Give us us today our daily bread. Forgive forgive us our sins, as we forgive forgive those who sin against us. Lead us us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the the Lord's Lord's death death until until he comes. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Most Most merciful merciful Lord, Lord, your your love love compels compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with your precious body and blood of your Son that we may live in us, and we in him, 
and that, and that we, we with, with the, the whole company, company of Christ, Christ may sit, sit and eat, eat in your kingdom. Amen. Amen. The body and blood of Christ.
Let us pray. Eternal God, giver of love and power, your Son, Jesus Christ, was sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news we proclaim through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Together, Father of all, we give, we give you, you thanks, thanks and praise that, that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. To we whom the Spirit lights Give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us. So we and all your children shall be free. And the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So notices. Plenty of them, all in the pew leaflet. So... I won't go through them all, but if there's anything I need to mention particularly, please let me know. And apologies to those who were expecting wine this morning. I just had not prepared for that, so my apologies. The one thing we were going to do is refresh um, our prayer, uh, the little part where we pray for people who we know uh, by name. So we're going to take, to make it fair, take everybody off. And if you would like somebody putting on, would you please let one of the church wardens know? Or one of the, um, Keith or myself. Good. So the blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.